So in this video series, um, we're going to look into a very fascinating, beautifully designed uh, storage technique, which is built on top of inexpensive, cheap commodity hard disk devices, which is called RAID, short of redundant array of inexpensive disks. So it's such a beautifully designed, fascinating piece of you know software artifact that was initially arranged, designed, and proposed by a group of uh, a scientist uh, from UC Berkeley back in the late 80s. So at a high level, its idea is to, you know, using some, you know, magic to combine a bunch of extremely cheap, inexpensive hard disk drives so as to overcome the inherent performance, reliability, and capacity limitations of those like individual single inexpensive hard disk, commodity hard disk drives, so as to perform better performance, higher capacity, and a greater enhanced reliability. Okay. So first, motivation. As I've already mentioned, so what's good about a single disk hard disk drive? Here we're talking, we're using disk to refer to, simply refer to uh, mechanical spinning hard disk drives. Okay, so performance wise, a single hard disk drive is extremely slow, especially if we're talking about random IOs. It's really bad, it sucks for performing random IO performance, right? And uh, the second limitation is the store capacity. If you are talking about only one single hard disk drive, Capacity is always limited. It's not scalable in, term, in terms of capacity, right? And we want a higher capacity because we, we need high capacity to be able to store high volume of data that we generate. And the third limitation is a single disk is obviously not reliable. So here reliability means the chances that it getting, the chances that it getting failed right so within a single disk with a single disk it's not reliable and if it 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 got an error it got broken all most likely the data stored in that particular single disk would be is going to be lost okay so that is why we introduced raid redundant array of inexpensive disks to kind of overcome all of these limitations exposed by a single disk to basically perform higher performance, better capacity, and uh, enhanced reliability so that it can tolerate more failures while being able to sustain high performance with, by storing more data, okay? So the motivation, uh, we've just now that we've just talked about the motivation. Let's see the wish list for a single hard disk drive. The first ever wish list, uh, the first ever wish for a single hard disk drive is to make it faster, because it's a mechanical piece of hardware. It uses hard disk arm that this had to move back and forth in order to su support. The read and write operations, which is extremely slow compared to electronic disk, which is flash bit SSDs. So how to beat the performance of flash, right? By using extremely cheap commodity hard disk drive. And the second wish is people wish a single disk to be larger so that it, it could be used to support, to, to, to store uh, more data, right? Because uh, applications are constantly generating more and more data and you need more and more disk capacity to store all of them and also in a reliably manner. So the third wish is to be able to support, sustain and store all this data reliably. And we don't want the valuable data to be lost, right? So with only one single disk, can we achieve all these Objectives or all these wishes by using some magic, by writing some more intelligent, smarter piece of software artifact. Can we do that? Of course not. Right? So the challenge is 
Most file systems work only one on one single hard disk drive. So how to overcome this challenge to perform higher performance with larger capacity with greater reliability and flexibility? That is why we introduced the solution, which is called RAID, redundant array of inexpensive disk. So if you take a look at this example stack graph, at the very bottom, at the very low level, we're looking at the hardware, right? The hard disk drive. These are hardware, okay? On top of that, we're essentially looking at the software. But the lowest level of software is the RAID logical disk. And we write RAID as a piece of intelligent and comprehensive software artifact sitting directly on top of the hardware to expose the interface of a logical hard disk drive and expose this interface to the upper level application, which is another piece of system software, which is a false system, okay? And uh, the applications directly interact with the file system to perform read and write IO operations. And the file system further interact with the underlying another piece of software, which is a RAID logical disk piece of software, system software, and which interact with the bottom level hardware to perform the fundamental hardware uh, read and write up operation using the, the, the raw device interfaces exposed by hard, hard disk drives. But note here, when we're talking about RAID technology, there are these two different categories. One is the software-based RAID, and the other is hardware-based RAID. By hardware-based RAID, it essentially means that you build the hard disk drive with the inherent support of the RAID technology. And this technique, this all po this policies and designs are inherently embedded as part of the hardware. And uh, the scope of our lecture is focused on the software-based RAID implementation, okay? Where everything can be implemented as, as software instead of hardware. So this is our focus. Focus of, okay. So, Reed's objective is to be able to, 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 to be transparent, right? Because it adds, again, it introduces one more layer of abstraction. More layer. So, by introducing this layer, you want to you wanna be transparent to the upper level application, which is file system. And another important objective is the file system to be instantly deployable because you don't, you don't, wanna, you don't want a file system to be modified and uh, you want it to be easy to deploy directly on top of the read logical disk software. Okay. And uh, it naturally, if you take a look at this right hand side, the logical disks naturally supports higher performance because it combines multiple hard disk drives so that it pro provides better aggregated performance. And uh, similarly, it is able to store more data simply because it combines all the capacities that belongs to all the disks that it covers. And the same, similarly, the third objective is reliability because you, you store data multiple times. You store different replicas, duplicates the same data multiple times. So it automatically achieves better reliability so that you can tolerate one or multiple disk failures without the risk of losing your data, okay? How to support reliability is by using redundancy, okay? or replication. Okay. So 
Why are we talking about, why are we looking at these inexpensive disks? This is simply because those commodity hard disk drive hardware, they are cheap. So they are popular. Again, economies of scale wins. Simply because it's cheap, it's inexpensive. So that you can, with the same budget, you can get more, like 10 times, possibly 10 times more hard disk drives compared to, you know, flash devices. And then you can write a piece of intelligent software on top of that to manage more, these many hard disk drives, so as to get the same or even better performance compared to, you know, the, the amount of flash devices that you could uh, purchase with the same budget, with the same amount of money, but with greater reliability, okay? So that just simply because you can get many commodity hardware for the same price, okay? So that is attractive. And the strategy on top of that is we just write soft software which performs uh, more intelligently so as to provide high quality data storage to provide better performance with greater reliability, okay? And here, the RAID software, the RAID idea is it exploit this fundamental trade-off. And this trade-off is often considered in many aspects within computer science world, which is to kind of compensate poor properties of an individual single device, cheap device, by combining them to provide uh, greater performance, okay? So let's talk about general strategies. So how to use, how to basically combine different extremely cheap commodity hard disk drives together. So one naive or you can call it straightforward strategy is you just simply combine just multiple disks, which is called J, um, JBot, just a bunch of disks, right? So this is the, the baseline strategy, just combine them. So in this case, if you take a look at this example, we have disk zero and we have disk one. Each of these two disks is able to support is able to store 100 different data objects or 100 different disk blocks. You just provide one simple RAID layer, which is simply combining these two disks together. And you expose a unified uh, logical disk space, which starts from zero all the way to 200, okay? And in this case, the first half of this logical disk space, logical, The first half of the logical disk space gets mapped to the first, the physical disk. And the second half gets mapped to the second disk, okay? And moving one step further, how to add higher reliability is by doing replication or by supporting redundancy. In this case, how to support redundancy is by using more disks. Instead of using two disks, we store the same amount of data with more disks, okay? Instead of using two, we use four. We double the size of the number of disks that are being used by exposing again the unified uh, logical disk space between from 100 from 0 to 200 but basically by leveraging uh, two times more hard disk drives you store the same amount of data two times okay the first half gets mapped to the first two hard disk drives so this is the first copy and the second storage the second disk stores the second copy and for the second half, and this is the first copy stored on disk number, disk one, disk two, disk three, and disk four. 
So the first copy of the second half of the logical space gets mapped to the third disk. And likewise, the second copy gets mapped to the fourth disk, okay? So this way, you basically enhance the reliability by supporting data redundancy. Okay, so we're talking about redundant array of inexpensive disk. We are looking at the following three basic metrics. So the first metric is a performance metric. Performance metric, as always, we're talking about these two different specific performance metrics. So one is the throughput. Uh, the first one is throughput. Okay. The second one is latency for small IOs. And throughput is for large sequential IOs. Okay, these two performance metrics. And the second basic metric of RAID is a capacity metric, okay? It means how much space can the application use to store unique piece of data, okay? So that also translates to like how much, how much effective space that you can have, you can have. So the third basic RAID metric is reliability. So how to quantify reliability? is by using the total number of disks can we safely, the total number of disks that could sac sacrifice the, the failure, or how many disks can we safely lose. In this case, under the reliability metric, we assume this failure model, which is called fail stop, okay? So in this fail stop failure model, for each and every disk involved, it only covers two fundamental states. One state is it fail. The other state is doesn't fail. So the first state is it works. And the second state is it fails. These two binary state. Okay, so this is a fail stop. A typical simplified failure model that is widely applied and used to analyze the, the fault tolerance uh, metrics of a wide variety of different star systems not only storage system, but computer systems, okay?